Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jazz and today I am drawing an isometric room. Uh, this is a pretty common exercise for uh, artists that want to practice uh, drawing environments, which is something that I definitely struggle with. I find environments to be a little bit boring, a little bit tedious. Uh, I don't enjoy them very much, but I do know that backgrounds that have more effort put into them can really elevate an illustration beyond something simple into something that feels a lot more real, um, that tells a lot more of a narrative, and a room can really describe a narrative or character, really contribute to the atmosphere, that kind of thing. So I believe, as much as I don't like doing it, it's an important skill to practice <laughs> and get better at. So that was my goal here, was to, uh, to really fill in this environment and make it look rich and lived in, and also to tell little mini stories. So um, isometric, by the way, means that all of the dimensions are equal, so this is a perfectly cube-shaped room. And with that in mind, I had to make the perspective follow all of the cubes. I think I succeeded for the most part. There's maybe one or two things that are a little bit off, but it's definite improvement over um, previous attempts. So I decided to make this isometric room the room of a little witch student, a uh, modern witch, maybe high school, maybe college, that kind of age. Um, and that allowed me to fill in the space with items that might be a little bit more fun than your typical room. So it's environmental practice with a little bit of fun sprinkled on top, which is something that is important to do. If you're practicing something you don't like, it's a good idea to connect it to something that you do like. For example, if you hate drawing architecture, you hate drawing buildings, it's but you love drawing characters, it's a good idea to draw what you believe would be your character's room or their house or something like that because it allows you to think about your character and use them as a stepping stone to improve a skill that you're not as happy working on. And um, for me, that was making interesting objects in this room. Um, and having it be witchy objects also allows me to use fun lighting effects and even even crowd the space further because I can add things that have a specific person rather than just clutter. Like my room is probably about as crowded as this room here, but a lot of it is clutter that doesn't have a specific theme or add to the illustration. So because this is art, I do need everything in it to add to the illustration. So the line art took me so long on this illustration. So. <laughs> It took forever, just because there's every single object in the room and it's incredible how long it took me to fill it all in. But I am actually really happy with how much detail there is in the room. I, I feel like there's a lot of mini illustrations where if you broke this image up into smaller illustrations, you'd be able to see that a, a lot of it is um, detailed and and of high quality in each section of the room like the shelves are their own illustration the desk is its own sort of illustration the the cupboard bookshelf that's what i mean <laughs> so really i was balancing making sure everything looked good enough and making sure that i wasn't putting too much detail into any one place like i wasn't adding specific seams on the pillow or <laughs> or on the chair um so really, I wanted this to look illustrative, and I wanted to keep it simple by doing a uh, cell shaded style so that I wouldn't have to blend and paint everything out. Maybe I'll do a painted environment in the future, um, <laughs> but as for this one, where we're getting the idea of drawing these objects in perspective, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to keep things a little bit simple. Um, some of the hardest parts were making sure that round objects fit with the perspective. Um, so the carpet on the floor, the window on the wall, because they don't have any uh, square edges, what I had to do was draw a square, or a rectangle actually, within the perspective of the illustration, and then put the circle inside that. I'm not sure I fully succeeded on uh, all of them, but <laughs> at least some of them look pretty good. Um, I love that backpack, that little bat backpack. It's so cute, and I don't know if it was a real thing that I was referencing or something from my imagination, but I absolutely adore it and I want one so badly. Um, I also had the fun of being able to draw not one but two familiars in this illustration, a nice little crow, and a cat curled up sleeping on the bed. Oh, so cute. 
it really does feel like this is the room of um, a young witch. So that's that's super fun. Um, I was just trying to draw from anything magical that I had in my mind. So that's uh, crystals, spell books, um, what, what's it called? Crystal ball, uh, potions, skulls, that kind of thing. Um, and especially the moon and stars and tarts like that. I wanted this person to be sort of aiming for celestial astrology, that kind of witch rather than something like a plant witch or a dark arts witch or you know there's there's lots of different I, I like that even though the context of witch has a sort of image that draws to mind based on the details that you put into it it can be somebody completely different a, a completely different type of personality so if I if I did this illustration again I could do something like an ancient forest witch and it would be a completely different vibe like all of the furniture would be different the bedding would be different the room design all of it would be completely different there are more witchy stuff <laughs> I think I think it turned out extremely well um, each individual object I tried not to put too much time and effort into just enough so that you knew what it was which I think is important when you're doing designs because even in painterly styles you'll see that an object in the back is just one or two brush strokes it's more about giving the illusion of the object than the actual object. Um, so in the future, I might try to do something that's less precise, has less line art in it, but still gives the impression that this is a background. I'd love to do an exterior background uh, of a home or something like that. I've done a couple, but I always feel like they look a little bit strange. Um, so that's something I'd like to practice in the future as well. I'm really happy with how this cat turned out. <laughs> I didn't take him too seriously, I just doodled him and I think he turned out absolutely adorably. Um, all of that stuff on the wall, on the shelf, I, I absolutely love. My favorites are the snake in the jar, the little Venus flytrap plant, who's actually inspired by Little Shop of Horrors uh, Tui. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely thought that was uh, amazing and I wanted to make the plants look like they're reaching out towards the potion to try and get it. Um, originally I was gonna make it look like he had kind of gotten really big and exploded and that kind of thing <laughs> from drinking the potion um, and I was gonna do the same thing with the plant that's hanging up over the coat rack because there's a spilled potion next to it so I was gonna try and make it look like the potion had spilled into the plant and made it grow very rapidly um, but I realized by the time I was doing the line art that I was off a little bit and I couldn't make it look like it was under the potion so maybe in the future um, this was actually an extremely tedious part, drawing the constellations. I don't know why it was so tedious, but I was really trying to get them right. <laughs> and I think I got all 12, 12 of them? 12, yes, 12. 12 of them on there. Um, but I'm not sure. So if I forgot your sign, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> I really tried, I swear. Um, as for the color palette, I wanted to keep everything mostly monochromatic. Um, so everything's in a little bit of a, a blue... I guess analogous is probably more appropriate than monochromatic. Everything's sort of in like a, a red purple, blue purple, actual purple range there. Um, and I, I think it came together really cohesively. The only like, and, and I had some standout colors as well, a really, really dark blue and a really, really light purple to really give me some dramatic amount of contrast. And I think um, with the set of colors that I have, it managed to balance out pretty well. Oh, there's my little plant. Tui, so cute. Love him. Um, and if you have any ideas for the name of the snake in the jar, the cat, or the crow, please feel free to tell me because I would love to hear some excellent witchy themed names. Uh, that would be awesome. Um, so I wanted to combine sort of this idea of the older witch, you know, riding around on brooms, having a crow familiar, that kind of thing, with also a bit of modern conveniences like the um um what's it called oh goodness i completely my train the backpack that's what i'm talking about and more modern furniture design but still wanted to give the idea of witchiness in every every everyday life there um originally i wanted to make those moons look like they were sitting on a bed of cloud pillows uh, but it didn't end up turning out. So I still think they look like they're hanging in the night sky with those darker pillows behind them and them being lighter. Um, yeah, I mean, basically I'm just going through finishing up the coloring here. I don't really have all that much more to say about this illustration. It took me quite a while, but I'm really happy with the way it looks. 
Uh, at the end, I, I bring in this really vibrant pink color that I use to make all of the glowing parts of the illustration uh, really make them stand out. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I, I think I'm uh, <laughs> just about done with my narration here, so I'll pop back in at the end. So that's the end of the video. I'm just finishing up those lighting effects, making them look nice and glowy. Uh, if you like this video, leave a like. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. You can also follow me on my social medias, which will be linked in the description down below. That's Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter. I post process pics there and things that I don't post my YouTube channel. So once again, thank you so, so much for watching and have an absolutely lovely day and all that jazz.